dropping out of school was the best thing for me though just because the timing worked out i had you know jumped on instagram during its like gold rush days Years ago, Vincent, alias Not Bad, realized that college was not for him. So he decided to go all in in his crochet business. Today, we will talk about why it was the right decision for him, how did everything work out, but also the challenges that he faced. I am so honored that he accepted to be my guest. Let's meet Vincent. Thank you so much for being the new guest on the Crochet Podcast. I'm so happy to finally have you. We always talk, but we never got to talk in person. So I'm very happy to have you. How are you doing today? Good, good. Thank you so much for having me. I know we've done, we like worked through our brands and stuff. So it's nice to like sit yeah. down and have a face to face. Yeah, I'm excited. Happy Halloween. Um, happy Halloween. Today it's Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Are you doing, are you dressing up or anything for Halloween? No, I'm working on my <laughs> Christmas patterns, unfortunately. Oh my gosh, already on the Christmas stuff. <laughs> yes, yes. It's so funny. Um, well, yeah. thank you so much to be here. Can you please introduce yourself? Yeah. Hello, everybody. Um, my name is Vincent Greenheit. Um, online, I'm known as Not Bad. Uh, that's my artist slash alias um, online, my artist name. Um, I reside out of Portland, Oregon, so over here on the west coast and i am a i have i'm a crochet a professional crochet artist i guess um technically so i have been yes. paid for my services which is really really cool to say never thought that would be a a job description i'd be saying out loud um <laughs> a lot of odd jobs and i guess this is just one of them um but yeah i uh, mainly focus on amigurumi which is the um, knitted and or crochet knitted dolls. It's a Japanese term, amigurumi. Um, that's my main focus. However, I have um, touched upon a lot of other things as well. And I am also working, or actually we'll get more into me once we um, talk on the podcast. So <laughs> Yes, yes. Well, well, thank you so much, Vincent. When, when did you start crocheting? When, when did you start learning crochet? Yeah, so I am... 29 now um and i started eight years ago so it was i turned 21 in october and i started crocheting in august so like pretty much at the at 21 um 21 years old so okay. right when turning you really do turn into an adult in the states so that was kind of <laughs> my transition into adulthood i guess was uh the crochet. crocheting <laughs> yeah so yeah it's been it's been a while so my early 20s and that's pretty much what I've dedicated most of my life to um, throughout my 20s, which is... Cool. What led you to, to to want to learn crochet? Like, did you see it online? Did you see pictures? Or Yeah, um, I wanted to get into it back in the day. I, I remember like hearing that someone was selling crochet in high school, and that was like my first memory of it. Um, I definitely tried to get people to teach me how to do it. Um, people around me um, in high school and in college, and it just like never stuck. And then my final like, because uh, I had kind of uh, decided to take a step away from school and my job at the time, because I was just like so burnt out and fried. And I wanted to pick up crochet again. Kind of didn't think I'd be able to do it, but the moment I saw that you could make dolls, uh, in particular Pokemon, was kind of my big. Yeah okay, I, I got to sit down and like make this happen. So my mantra was, if I sit here for eight hours straight, I will be eight hours better than I, I was. And sure. that's, that was the only motivation I had. And I just, I stuck to it. Uh, it took me it's like seven hours. I, I kid you not. It was like seven hours to learn how to do like a chain, which was, yes, yeah. I just, I just <laughs> couldn't do it. My, I, I am like, hard. it is. I, I teach crochet classes now and sometimes these people pick it up in like 30 seconds and I'm just like, Oh man, oh man I wish I, I wish I had that intro into it, but um, I'm glad I stuck through it. I'm definitely not a prodigy. So um, I had to start from the bottom, but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm glad to see it, uh, see what it became. I will say though, once I did get it, it kind of all started clicking though. So like mm -hmm. my, my progress into learning how to do the rest came pretty easily it was just the initial, how do you move your hands? Um, yes. Thing. 
which I feel like I should have been better at. I've been playing video games my entire life, and everyone's like, oh, your hand-eye dexterity is so good, or your coordination. I'm like, I, I didn't feel that Well, right. sometimes <laughs> it's different skills, you know? <laughs> yeah, totally. So that's how I got into it. And then, yeah, I just started with Pokemon, and then I just um, was making other people's designs, like on their blogs, and then I jumped into uh, making my own little characters. Did you start by selling your creations? Like, was it something you were you were doing first? I uh, yeah yeah I I mean I would that wasn't really like the plan, but I made them and everyone was like, oh, like I would buy one or you should sell them, you should sell them. I, I think a lot of people hear that when they are crocheting. Yeah. Um, I so I did do like I was like really scared to sell them. Um, you know, because it's like I just learned this and I don't know if I'm like you know, sewing this correctly or, you know, first example, I wasn't yeah. even flipping my work inside out. So it was looking a bit, a bit rough. Um, in my opinion, uh, you know, I, I you should see some of the sewing I was doing. Like it looked terrible, but you have to, st uh, you have to send me pictures so I can, <laughs> I can share them in the podcast. Oh, I will. I will. Um, and because we always judge ourselves harder, you know, than other people. I'm sure it's, it's actually very nice. Uh, I appreciate the kind words, but this one is object. The early stuff is objectively bad, but I'm okay with that. I, you know, I, I can really appreciate where I came from. Okay. Um, but you know, I did one market to, I did one market and it wasn't really my thing. Um, and then I just, I, you know, I was on Etsy. I just didn't like selling, but I did know for a fact, like right when I started crocheting, I did want to design and mm -hmm. that was, I knew that's where I wanted to put my focus into. So. Um, I stopped selling pretty pretty early on. Yeah, probably six months I tried selling and then I, I was done. Tell me a little bit more because in your Instagram bio, you have, so you are a, a crocheter, but you also say that you are head of digital at Rimbler. Mm -hmm. So can you tell me a little bit what led you to this position? Because I know I know it's it's crochet related, but I want to know how did that happen, and I'm sure I'm not the only one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a it's a cool position to be in for sure. I'm I feel like I'm kind of like this like weird anomaly at the moment because I'm like I have one foot in the you know the influencer content creator space, and then my other foot is also helping manage that, and you know, yeah. kind of being the stereotypical uh, millennial in tech life. So we do I'm, everything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it's cool to, to be there, but um, yeah, that wasn't something I had sought out. Um, I actually didn't know about Ribbler as much. Um, I was just, it was during the time, um, during COVID, like the thick of it, like quarantine stuff, I was posting a bunch and um, I was really growing my channels quite a bit thanks to like TikTok and um, Reels and stuff. And just out of nowhere, I got an email about it. Um, you know, they reached out to me because they were looking for someone for actually the chief marketing officer position. Okay. And yeah, I guess they had uh, a gut feeling about me. And so they reached out and, you know, we had chatted and uh, yeah, like I said, like working in tech was not, not something I had ever um, thought I would be doing. Yeah, I don't even, you know, I never, I dropped out of school, so I didn't even have my degree or uh, yeah, I don't have a degree for that kind of a thing. So I was just like, you know, I would have never considered but yeah, they um, had faith in me and they really liked kind of like the way I promote myself and the, you know, the craft in general, which was a, a huge honorable thing to, to hear from them. Uh, yeah, so I took a position, you know, they kind of took a risk on me for sure. I mean, I honestly feel like they, there's a lot of, you know, experienced people who have done the position for years, you know, maybe a bit older as well, who, who, who like know the industry, but they wanted kind of some fresh blood and they decided to take a take a chance on me. So I'm really glad that my content was able to reach them and they were impressed by it. Uh, That's a and, beautiful story. Yeah, it's I really do owe them quite a bit. Um, my my Ribbler team. Um, I'm now, you know, it's a it's a startup. We just hit our third birthday and I joined when it was a year and a half. So some things and for, have uh, sorry, for those who don't know, just can you say what Rimbler is about? Because I'm right. just thinking, I'm like, well, I know Rimbler, but maybe some people don't. Yeah, that's, I should have said that too. That's my bad. <laughs> yeah, so uh, Rimbler is this new, um, it's a 
pla- like it's an e-commerce platform slash an app uh, where you can buy and sell um, digital interactive patterns. So you can find your crochet, knitting, uh, sewing, and Tunisian crochet patterns. Um, you know, we're all very used to PDFs and they're kind of the, they're kind of, Rivler is here to kind of get rid of PDFs or, you know, at least uh, offer a different kind of um, alternative to them. Uh, yeah. And I know that sounds like you might gasp hearing that out loud. I definitely was like, what does that even mean? You know, I, <laughs> as a designer, I've been working with PDFs and like documents yeah. for my entire career. Uh, but yeah, this is a really cool it's a really cool software. So when you go into the pattern, you can, you know, cross it off. You can watch YouTube videos within it. Um, there's a bunch of different things you can do when you start yeah. integrating technology. Uh, one of the things as a designer I hated the most is, you know, you put out a pattern and there's like one error and, you know, you have to, it's a, it's a whole mess. I'm sure people who are listening know the horrors of that. That's like the reason not to become a pattern <laughs> like designer. Heat. Yeah. It's, it's terrible. And so you have to email everybody, explain it. It's embarrassing, but it's kind of a rite of passage, honestly. Mm-hmm. But, you know, with Ribbler, we have the software where you can make one edit on your side and it updates for everybody. There's no, you save hours of your time doing this. I didn't know that, actually. Oh, really? Yeah. No. So you, that's the thing about Ribbler is there's so much to it. I'm still learning more about yes, the software. Yes, there are so many, like, little you know, like bonuses and stuff, but I didn't know that. Yep. Yeah. It's really, it's really cool. Um, so, you know, we offer interactive patterns. We've now just launched, um, our partnership with Joanne. So you are able to buy materials straight through the platform. So very convenient, you know, you don't have to like do all the steps just to start a project. It's all in one place. We have a community section and, um, you know, you can follow threads and, all that kind of stuff. So, and always adding more to the platform. So we are just an interactive pattern e-commerce platform at the end of the day, but a lot to it. We're trying to be more than just a come in and get out, you know, trying to make it a platform where there's a reason to stay. And um, you should, you know, you should have a relationship with your own creativity and your own pattern. And, you know, this makes it a, a cool way to do it. We just introduced live streaming to it. So I've been able to live stream in my pattern, which is just like, I That's so believe, cool. I can't believe I'm doing it. You know, I don't know how they came up with it, but it's a really, really cool platform. And I love how Rimblock is always very close from to like crocheters and knitters. You can tell it was created by people who know what they are talking about. Mm-hmm. Like compare, you have Etsy, which of course is mm-hmm. like very big, but it was not made for crocheters or for knitters so right. i really like Rimblur for that because you can tell like oh yes they made that for this reason yeah the uh, our team uh, especially you know uh, design like uh, one of our uh, founders is a huge crocheter and knitter and she just kind of saw what was missing in the the space um you know pds are pretty limited and just like having a having a, like, there's, like, so many problems with it, too, like, you know, theft, like, if I'm selling on Etsy, and someone buys my PDF, it's out of my hands, you know, (laughs) like, now it's, it's, it's just, like, a a wild card of what's going to happen with it. On on Ribbler, you know, if someone steals your pattern or something that's in someone's library, we do have the ability to just take it away from them, so, you know, you could argue, like, it screenshot it and write it all up, but that adds a bunch of extra steps to the theft, that. Yeah, you have to you have to be very determined to do exactly, that. Exactly, exactly. So you know that's another thing is just like the theft and every once again that's something every pattern designer goes through is theft. You know, I go on Pinterest and I see uh, I see plenty of my patterns just being sold or distributed just <laughs> for, for, like for why. <laughs> so do you do you say something about it usually or now you're just like whatever. Uh, I used to, I, I should, and people, you know, will be like awesome. They'll be like, Hey, did you see that this is happening? And I've kind of given up honestly, which is <laughs> terrible, but I, I don't know. Like I'll spend all this, exert all this energy to like get it fixed. And then another one pops up and I'm like, yes. I'm like, you know what? That's fine. I, I, whatever at this point, I've kind of given up on, it's kind of me just like losing hope on humanity than anything. <laughs> so it's whatever, but now I have alternatives. No, I get it. It can be things. very 
very like tiring to do stuff like that. So now with Rimbler, at least you don't have this issue. So that's a yeah, good thing. I definitely <laughs> feel a bit more protected. You know, like I said, theft can still happen, but um, it's like a it's like a seatbelt kind of. You know, you're not trying to like get deaths down to zero. You're trying to reduce damage more than anything. So being able to reduce the amount of theft is is a lot better than just my mindset of dang. <laughs> and it is, yes. you know, like look the other way, which is unfortunate, but yeah, it's cool. And I think it's important to keep uh, creators being motivated too, because if you keep, you know, like I think it can be very discouraging if you see your patterns always being sold by someone else. I totally. know it can be like very, we never talk about it, but sometimes it can be very frustrating for sure. Yeah, I see that that's a wall for a lot of people who want to pattern design, but that's like the reason not to is that I don't want to get stolen and stuff. And that's totally understandable. Um, but yeah, Ribbler does have um, capabilities to reduce that. So if anyone's interested, uh, it's a very cool software. And the whole platform itself. It is. I, I can say it. I use it. It's very cool. Yes. Thank you. It's really so, cool. So what is a... Uh... So you seem to be very busy uh, between everything. What is a classic normal day for you, for example? Oh, uh, yeah, that's yeah, that's a good question. I am doing a lot since I'm like doing my head of digital stuff, um, and I am content creating like pretty much full time uh, along with my partnerships. And uh, let's see here. I also teach. Let's see. Okay, so like on a normal weekday, <gasps> if I <laughs> Yeah, um, a lot. On, a, on a normal weekday, just like, you know, no variance or anything, I do my best to try to wake up at a decent time. I'm very bad about waking up because I go to sleep pretty late. Usually like 2 or 3 a.m. is when I'm going to sleep. Um, I try to wake up. Uh, I do wake up at 9, and I try to get my work day going at 10. Um, but it kind of depends on what I'm doing. Um, I've been putting a lot more of my focus and time into Ribbler, so um, I'm find myself just deep in emails, really. Um, my mm -hmm. position at Ribbler right now with Head of Digital is I'm just taking care of, um, you know, coordinating campaigns. I'm in talks with, like, content creators, influencers, um, talking promotion, and doing the um, the things you see on Ribbler for, like, the digital side of things. So when you see, like, that featured wish list, um, the wish list, the community stuff, um, you know, just, like, the digital aspects to the platform. Uh, so... I'm doing emails, just talking, conversing, and I'm also doing onboarding for the platform as well. So I am the person who reaches out, you know, I see that you're a pattern designer and I'm like letting you know about the platform, kind of like a mini salesman, I guess, but, you know, trying to hold your hand along the way because it is technology. It's a whole new thing. I know a lot of crocheters, knitters, designers are kind of stuck in their ways, stuck in their habits, myself included. Um, you know, I just went exclusively with the and it took, it was it was kind of weird to depart from you know the traditional thing. So, anyways, back on track. You so, you transferred all you your patterns that you you used the uh, Etsy. Yeah, so I was like on Etsy, okay. Ravelry, um, all those things. But now I'm just completely off and just interactive and my blog um, for stuff. Okay. Uh, yeah, so usually uh, mid morning, so like 10, 10 to twelve, I'm just doing emails, catching up. Um, you know it is a global company. So I have people messaging me, you know, like 12 hours ahead, eight hours ahead. So there's a lot to wake up to. And then um, I will spend my time on social media doing my not bad stuff um, as well, you know, creating content. Um, yeah, you know, posting, you kind of have to post nowadays in today's landscape. Yes. Um, and then I'm also kind of double dipping um, during the afternoon, uh, you know, I'm on TikTok, Instagram, kind of like looking for new people. Um, just being engaged and communicating, which is like, I feel like 90% of my job is just communicating, um, which can take its toll. Uh, I don't think people realize how much of like your social battery, there's like a digital side of it and I only have so much. So it, it is kind of exhausting. Yes, um, it is. You know, take a break. I will watch my YouTube, whatever videos come out, Twitch. Then I get back on the email grind. Um, if there's like campaigns or promotions, uh, making sure I'm getting those emails out. I talk to my I talk to my team pretty often. Um, we try to keep in pretty constant contact, uh, and I'll be doing that for the entire day. If there is a deadline or something I need to do, I might crochet like kind of in the later evening, like four to five, 
and then I have dinner like religiously at like 5 30 um <laughs> you know I uh, have dinner with my partner and we'll like chill out for a few hours because I definitely need to chill out and then at night I'm I try to get some video game time in or I go to a tournament for like the card games I play but if I don't have any of that stuff happening I'm usually just working through the night so like eight to midnight I'm like working on something whether it be a deadline or something I need to catch up on for Ribbler or um, anything in between um, while also trying to maintain my relationships which is why I'm on discord quite a bit so I really like to do like the body doubling thing where you know you just have someone like in a discord call or you have someone on a stream so there's kind of like someone there so it doesn't feel yes you know just in your own head uh, focusing is definitely not the easiest I feel like especially when you work from home 100% of the time <laughs> so uh, <laughs> yeah sometimes it can be it can be challenging yeah, and then midnight to like 3 a.m. is kind of when I'm just like doing my own thing. So, so is this, you seem like very, very busy. So do you do that from Monday to Friday or do you also work on weekends? Yep, Monday through Friday for sure. Yeah, the, although I am really busy, there is like, you know, flexibility to be able to, you know, it, it's. I feel like my jobs are kind of get the job done more than put the hours in kind of kind of thing so you know I can I do have some flexibility but then I do work the weekends Saturday I don't work that's like the one day I like don't respond to anything I just won't do anything and then Sundays I'll like teach classes I teach crochet classes at like my local yarn store um, oh wow you so, get your social interaction yeah yeah I really like it um if anyone has tips in the comments though I sweat like a pig when I'm like like teaching for some reason i feel i feel it can fine be stressful i feel calm and collected but like i guess just internally i'm like freaking out <laughs> so um that's I, so cool i do enjoy teaching so i teach like crochet basics and then we'll have like workshops on like making like amigurumi like you know pumpkins ghosts uh, thematic stuff so um, yeah, so do you have the same people every every weekend like do they come back or every time it's a new group of people uh, it's typically a new group of people. Um, oh, wow. Some sometimes I'll have like repeats for like the workshops, but for the most part, it's uh, it's new people within the area. Um, I've been so like lucky that I have like followers, fans, uh, supporters, whatever you want to call um, people who follow me that they'll come and although like they're obviously like really good at what they do they just want to like come say hi lately they've been bringing Aww. my book which has been like really awesome someone actually came in and they made like this whole project for me like a little version of me and so oh it's my God, that's so cool yeah so it's been oh that's so nice pretty pretty cool to have um and he's super well made i know like... <laughs> yeah there's a lot of good talent over here in the portland oregon area so um wow. yeah it's it's cool it's cool um I really do enjoy teaching I I taught driver's education for four years in my early 20s so okay um I just like to be able to pass on a skill and it's like it's like you know doomsday the apocalypse so it's a really good bartering skill to have for when yes for sure for when the U.S. dollar um, has no value so get on that <laughs> you need a bartering skill <laughs> well that's that's very good and i i feel like your background is is so interesting because you say you dropped out of uh, school of of college right yep yep and you have like such a, a good position at Trimbler. like some people actually go to college for that yes and yes. i think that that's amazing because it really shows that thanks to crochet you can you can really do anything the did you feel like the learning process of the job was complicated? Like, did you did you feel like you were lacking some skills sometime, or you you always felt comfortable in your position? Oh, I was I've been pretty scared about the you know the very first few months. I was terrified every meeting and stuff. Uh -huh. I was, you know, I'm like, oh gosh, like I know I can. <laughs> Why do am this. here? Yeah, but you know, I it it was a lot to to take in and um. I, you know, I, I everyone says your twenties are like difficult, and I feel like you know when you're juggling like your mental health and all that stuff, and you know, it, it was a lot to take on for sure. But <clears throat> my team has been so patient with me, and 
you know, every step of the way, it's never been like, I'm like being watched and judged. They just, they, they know I can do a good job. I feel like they, they just want to polish me like a diamond, uh, which is a really, really nice, like positive uh, work atmosphere, um, which has been yeah. amazing. And I didn't really realize when I would be comfortable, but I don't know. I, you just, I just, you know, you do it enough and I just kind of yeah. became comfortable in the position um, of what I'm doing. And uh, now I'm not so scared, uh, you know. To, yeah, you, you know, feel more comfortable. Yeah, I feel more confident being in these meetings and stuff. And um, yeah, I, I guess it's like anything, right? I, I mean, I, the best way to learn a skill is like with real life application. So um, even if I did go to school for it, um, you know, for like the marketing, which is always ever changing. So I, I don't really regret yes. not going to school for that. Um, it's hard to be like, don't go to school, like be like me. But I do realize I'm in a very, uh, very privileged and fortunate and lucky situation. Um, however, I do feel like not going, dropping a school was the best thing for me, though, just because the timing worked out. I had, you know, jumped on Instagram during its like gold rush days, uh, which was really, really lucky. And um, I always felt really insecure and scared and kind of angry um, about my peers, you know, being in school. And I'm like, I always felt like I was playing like this game of like catch up. Like I, I gotta, I gotta make something of myself before they're all out of school or like I wasted my time. And, you know, looking back at my younger twenties, I'm like, dang, I had all the time in the world to figure it out. But when you're in your, you know, late you're always teens. Billy. You have to do it now. I know. Your late teens, <laughs> early 20s, it feels like you're just suffocating. Like you have to, by the time you're 26, you just ha have to have it all figured out. Like you're off your parents' yeah, insurance. because people tell you around, you know, like people are like, yeah, well, you're 25, you know, like figure right. it out. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, as like the last cusp of like millennial, we were, you know, told that that's how that's success right you have to go to school you have to start adulthood in debt and that was another thing i'm glad i didn't have to start adulthood with as much was a bunch of debt um so i just got really lucky but like you know i i really just think experience is going to be like your best resume but i believe you worked very hard too right it's not it's not only luck oh yeah yeah i i, <laughs> I, I just yeah i i appreciate that i did work yeah i've been working like every single day um, whether it be like an eight hour day or even like, you know, like a 30 minute, just something, you know, like yeah. who knows where that extra comment or engagement I had made an impact on someone had like got me far, you know, the more yeah. people, you know, the better. Um, in this case, it really was who I know, not what I know. Um, but yeah, I've, I've been working pretty hard. My, I've just been very career driven. Um, and I, I don't know why I wasn't like that in school. I was very I was a very bad student, so <laughs> I'm, I'm glad yeah, it well, out. It doesn't mean anything, I think, you know. Yeah, and definitely. Who you are as a kid and who you become as an adult is totally different, I believe. Yeah, so it, I'm, I'm <laughs> just, I'm very, I'm glad. I'm I'm very, very proud of myself for having a, a glowing review, it, or not review, a glowing resume. Um, if things yeah. did fall apart, like right now, I lost everything I I don't feel too scared about finding a new opportunity. So um, yeah. I'm just, I'm very, very glad that it all paid off um, <laughs> my, all my 20s. And I was able to balance it, not really balance, but I still got to have a plenty of amazing memories with like my social life. I got to travel um, and yeah, my, my 20s are going to be something to look back on. I'm really, really glad how my 20s turned out. Well, the 30s are going to get even better apparently, so. What That's what I hear. That's what I hear. I know dirty 30s. I hear it's like everything better, but without the stress of being a 20 year old. Yeah. So, yeah, the excited. 20s are really not, uh, really not easy for sure. I'm turning 30 like right now, and I'm like, oh, that was what, hard. What do, you, what do you mean right now? Like in December, in like oh. a month. Oh, well, GG's. I know I just turned 29 like literally 12 days ago. So, I have one more year, and yeah, yep. I will see you. See you there. Hopefully, yes, great in 30s. the next decade. <laughs> yeah, hopefully, great thirties for you too. You have so much underneath your belt, and it seems like Thank you, you. <laughs> are like just at the starting line. Like I, I feel like you have nothing but like a, a prosperous future ahead of you. So thank you. Congratulations. Yes, I, I believe the twenties are too 
figure it out what you want to do, you know, and even if you like change your mind, I changed my mind a lot in my 20s, but you know, I think he's made for that. So <laughs> yeah, it's, a, it's perfect. Yeah, it's cool to see whatever decisions you had made has you here. Um, a really yes. interesting, interesting spot. Um, yeah. But because you, you can start your 20s one way, right? You, you were going to school and then you end your 20s like understanding that you didn't need to go to school. <laughs> yeah, I, I really, I, 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 I always wonder like what, what would that have, what, what path would that have looked like for me? Um, mm -hmm. You know, I had worked just so many odd jobs that I don't even know where I would be. Yeah. And I, I never, I've actually never taken an art class or anything. So I never even considered art to be like a, I don't think me doing crochet was very, very left field. Like I've never expressed any kind of artistic <gasps> That's skill. Crazy. Yeah. I never even knew I was artistic. And then I don't know, working in 3d just kind of like clicks for me, I guess. Like it just, yeah. it doesn't, you found uh, your medium. <laughs> yeah, I know I did. I like, for like com so companies and stuff when I'm doing like commission pieces they'll be like oh sketch out you know your next project and it looks terrible <laughs> I'm, I'm just like, like don't ask me to do that I know I'm like please just trust the process I promise it'll it'll come out looking and I I don't know about you but my sketches never turn out what I want it's always um, yes no. so I always you know always let the brands know that this is just a very 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 rough concept and it might not even be this when it comes to you but I promise it'll be good Probably. It's in your brain, you know, most of the time you're like, I, I can see it. I just cannot draw it. <laughs> that's it. You know, I actually just learned that that's a, that's a unique skill to be able to like visualize something in your brain. Like really? Some, like I just saw this thing that was like, uh, like if someone thinks of like an apple, they, they can't imagine an apple. They, they know what it looks like, but they can't like see it. So the fact that we can like see our projects is like that's crazy. So we are geniuses, is what we are. <laughs> uh, we we have some sort of intelligence for sure. Which I, I didn't. I thought that was a thing that everyone could do. Was to, yes, I, I never thought about that actually. That's which, super interesting. It's because the state America is putting fluoride in everyone's water and closing our third eye. So good on yeah. us. That, well, that's, that's what just, it is no, i mean that's what they say <laughs> don't that's tell me that i know nothing about it you know i'm from france i'm like oh okay that's true <laughs> oh i mean honestly for the states i wouldn't put it past them but who knows who knows yeah that's cool that you're in utah uh, utah is so beautiful oh yeah oh my gosh yeah, it, it's very nice it's it's very cold right now but it's a beautiful state and it always reminds me um where i'm from in france because it's a mountain and oh I it really reminds me home so <laughs> oh that's amazing even though I miss friends right I I do miss friends but I have been there and their food I was definitely surprised that you didn't get like that sucker punch of salt when you eat their food but it feels nice to not feel bloated and disgusting after a meal so I really that's like true, that that's true that's yeah, true and it, it's very uh diverse they have a lot of type of different thing even french food i can find so <laughs> oh <laughs> yeah very good. yeah france is a beautiful place i'd love to go back oh you, so you've been to france already you traveled in your 20s yep i went to france which was a lot of fun i've been to the philippines and i spent like two months in vietnam which was a lot of fun oh wow that's amazing yeah that was quite the trip that was yeah. it's such a blessing to be able to to travel and be, because were you already like a professional crocheter at that time? I was on the come up, yeah. Okay. I, well, yeah, I guess I was like good enough that I already had like a following. Um, so that was really cool to like, you know, also meet people. Um, oh, yeah. It, it wasn't for work purposes. It was really for like traveling with friends and partying purposes. But, you know, I got to do that on the side as well. So that was really cool. <laughs> yeah, that, <laughs> that's very cool. So you are still uh, publishing patterns. I see it uh, very often on your uh, on your social media, and so I noticed that you are only working with uh, Joanne's uh, yarns. Is there is a specific reason for that? Um, you know, they actually reached out to me like early, early days of of crafting, or when I first started my account. You know, just like the classic. Oh, we would love to send you some free product and stuff, and. Okay. Um, just over the years, I've, they've offered me quite a few opportunities, um, you know, 
you know, uh, promotions or campaigns here and there. I got to be in a commercial for uh, one of their <laughs> things. And I got to be with Phyllis from The Office, which was really, really awesome. Oh, that's so good. And about two or three years ago, they were just like, we would love to have you on, you know, as kind of like a, like a permanent thing. So, you know, I make, I do like monthly blog and uh, social media content for them each month. Um, okay. Which is a really great way to kind of keep me motivated to keep creating. Um, if I yes. didn't have a deadline, I would still continue to create for my blog and Ribbler at this point. But I don't know how often I would I would be able <laughs> to do it because it is a lot of work. Um, yes, I lose, it is. I definitely lose a lot of hours of sleep, especially coming up on a deadline, which I am currently in the middle of looking at the calendar. Like, oh gosh, uh, is that like uh, a Christmas deadline? This one is for my November, my November, my November stuff, and then okay, Christmas. I do not know what I'm making yet, so we shall see. We shall see. So every month you you have, I mean, is that a requirement? Like you have to publish a pattern. Yep, yep. So okay. that's kind of like the agreement, and then <gasps> that's a I, lot of work. Yeah, and then I, but you know, I get paid to do it, so it's kind of this like part of all my uh, streams of income and. Uh, and you know it's a it's like totally this is a really cool gig for anyone to be doing because uh, no matter what you put out there it's just gonna like live on forever because like when I put out a pattern you know I I do make the commission from Joanne or said company who isn't a competitor if I do something which I at this point I don't really work with other brands all that much because I don't really have the time mm-hmm. um, but you know your pattern gets to live on my pattern gets to live on my blog so. You know, you get like the ad revenue stuff. You get to live on Ribbler, you know, sales. And um, another thing about Ribbler is we do have Ribbler Earn. So if you have free patterns, you will soon be able to earn through ad revenue, which is going to be really cool oh, for that, designers. That's a good thing. Yeah. So I'll have my free stuff on there. Uh, and, you know, social media back when Instagram was like actually paying was really cool. I know TikTok yeah. has their thing. They don't do it anymore. I know it's ridiculous. I hate these companies. I I hope they hear me. Like these corporate fat cats, and, like, <laughs> these like big tech companies. It's ridiculous. Like they don't care about you. They don't care about the design. Like the small business, they just yeah. wanted to compete with their competition, which they finally had is in TikTok, and then they're like, eh, yeah, we're done. Oh, and gosh. it's hard because I feel like a lot of pressure um, to always post. I think that's the that's the most stressful thing. But you don't make money obviously view via instagram but you have the pressure also to keep posting if not i don't know if our listeners know that but if we don't post for like two weeks your next video won't get view yeah it's and it's not because of the followers it's just because of the algorithm i guess i know it sucks and it's like it, which it's ridiculous because these platforms wouldn't have content or viewers if it wasn't for us. Yeah. So yeah. I don't know why we're not it's getting very paid. Stressful. Yeah, I don't know why we're not getting paid to be on there, but and we I, used to yeah. uh, last year, I think Instagram stopped doing it. Were you Was pretty? Were you like pretty stoked about like the Instagram bonuses, like when that mm. was happening? Yeah. <laughs> That was that was nice, but I know TikTok. That has was like, nice, but it didn't last. I know, but that's that's like the all these companies that they just they just yeah nothing it, and that's that's the scary thing about this career choice is everything is so volatile. Like right now, mm-hmm. things are like going pretty well for me, but I have had to pivot so many different times and like trying to figure out what I want to do, which avenue I want to go down. Um, yes. Yeah, so it it's scary. Um, is it a career I would recommend? But then again, what what career is safe, right? We saw what happened with COVID. Yes. People who had the most safe jobs lost their yeah. jobs. So at this point, it's kind of like whatever has the most fun, you should choose to Ooh, do. What makes you happy, do it because you don't know how long it's going to last. Yeah, so seriously. Just do it. I know, just relish no, I think I think actually it's a very good advice because I didn't know I could make money with crochet and I did it because I loved it and now mm-hmm. it's working. So do what you like you know and it might work truly truly it's it's like one of those things it's like hard to put i know like in american society especially you kind of have to everyone's uh monetizing their hobbies their passions which is in my opinion a little dystopian but um you know 
I think it's still something to pursue anyways. Because, like, you know, you kind of work up the inches or the increments. Like, would love to make enough just for the hobby to support itself. And I think that's an awesome goal to have. Um, yes. I think I think that's amazing. I That felt really good when I wasn't paying for my own um, supplies. And I could just create yeah, freely. Yeah, that feels so. good. Yeah, it feels really good. <laughs> it feels good to have it from your hard work as well. So. And also there are different like crochet businesses. Like you can decide to sell, you can decide to make pattern, you can decide to make a YouTuber. So I think there is a career for <laughs> whatever crocheter than you are, you know? Yeah, absolutely. And that just there's so many there, like new avenues keep opening up too that yeah. like, you know, when I first started crocheting it didn't exist as an option. You know, Ribbler is an example. Like this like that this wasn't a thing, you know, three years yes. ago until yeah. So it's pretty, it's cool. And it's really, I like the ever-changing landscape. I've like learned to kind of like go with it rather than like complain about every change because it's just like, yes. it is what it is, <laughs> you know. And I think it makes you, I don't know if you think like that, but I think it makes you better in what you do anyway because you are always trying to catch up and to improve and stuff. So I think it, it makes you makes you better every time. Yeah, it seems like you're pretty open to everything. Like, you know, when we first started working together, you were super open to the idea of like interactive patterns. It's amazing seeing you, you know, you have your YouTube channel with tutorials and a <laughs> podcast now, which is a really exciting endeavor. I know. And your patterns are so unique. I love the, your new bags. That oh, you just thank came out you. With. Look thank amazing. you so much. Yeah, I do a little bit of everything. People saw me because I was doing Yoshi and then I made a bag. I was like, I don't care. I don't want to keep making the same thing over and over, you know? Yeah, totally. And yeah, it's your range. Is, but you, is really you are the same too. You always put like different type of stuff. I try to. I definitely, I get kind of like, I definitely get the burnout really quickly if I'm just stuck doing the same thing over and over um i'm on the big tubular kick now with like the big yarn so i'm just using my hands and i haven't even used a hook in a little bit um so yeah i've seen you 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 made like a crown you released it like few a few weeks ago or oh, a week ago right yep i did like a it was like a wreath i did that was like the tubular yarn i did a cauldron before that um, yes <laughs> that was so cool stuff. for halloween yeah that was a that was a that one took off, which I'm really always feels good when a pattern does well. Yeah, when it works. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Are you gonna use it tonight to to go a treat and trick or something like that? Uh probably not. We kinda did our Halloween stuff this weekend. Um okay. so today feels kinda just like We'll go get a treat, but we're we're in a, an an apartment, so we don't really have people trick or treating here. I know. I was so sad about that. Me too. I'm in an apartment, and I'm like, I won't see. Nobody will come at my door. <laughs> I know it is a little sad. I I grew up in a cul de sac with my family, and it, you know, it's very very busy <laughs> with all that kind of stuff. Do they do trick or treating yeah. over in France? <sighs> yes, yeah, they they do more and more. I have the feeling, but it's not as big a, as here for sure. Oh. Yeah, it is like really big here, isn't it? I I love how how American just gets so excited about every every holidays, <laughs> you know, like how they decorate the houses and for Christmas, it, it's just insane. I love I hearing like good that. things. I like hearing good things about <laughs> Americans. You know, there's a lot of like things to like criticize about America, but it's always nice to hear someone who you know overseas, especially who has like positive of parts of. I mean, I think because I I lived. It's been a while now I live here and I used to live in France as well. I think there are good stuff everywhere and it's very true that there are bad stuff everywhere too. Mm -hmm. And there is no perfection. And we are always, with my husband, we are always thinking like, should we go back? Should we stay? Should we go back? And it's always like a point that we don't know because there is always something wrong in France or something wrong in America. So... I think there are bad things everywhere, unfortunately. Yeah, stay of the world. Yeah, but yeah. I'm glad you're enjoying some of the American aspects. <laughs> it, it is a cool I love place. it for the business. I love how people are so supporting. And, you know, like when you start a, a small crochet business in France, I remember people <laughs> were like, what? Like, <laughs> oh, yeah. What? You're going to sell pattern? And 
I, I just love how I always felt very supported by my American community. Even I have a French community too, and they are supportive, but I don't know. I love how he gave me this opportunity, you know, in, in the US. Yeah, that's a that's amazing. Um, I'm glad to hear that. Very cool. <laughs> do you write your patterns in French as well, or do you just? Oh uh, yes, yes. Cool. I do it both. I do it both. Wow. I I started only in French, and and I realized that I will have a bigger community. Honestly, if I if I write in English as well, so I just do it both. That's amazing. Yeah, we have uh, on Ribbler in the beta stuff, we have the Spanish beta right now. So you'll be able to translate your patterns immediately. So hopefully, yeah. you know, have the whole world be able to like open up your pattern, which will be really cool. And hopefully that'll save you some time. I'm not sure how long it takes for you to do both, but. He, yes, he, he can take a while for sure because sometimes like to translate and to use the right words, you know, like he, he can be challenging. <laughs> I see. I I took French in high school. And that was that's my only my only closeness to it. A lot of people told me that in the US that they had a <laughs> French class in school. Yeah, yeah. It it was cool. It was cool. My, do you I, do you use it often? I say un deux, un deux trois quite often, but other than that, it, it well, did. That's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> or yeah, when I was in France, you know, when people asked me how I was, you just. Comme si, comme ça. It was pretty, pretty yeah. classic. Um, it, when I was in France, it actually did help me like understand and like talk a little bit. But outside of that, I do not use it a whole lot. It, it's also a very hard language. It's been eight years I tried to teach my husband and he still doesn't speak. So it, it's very, it's a hard language. It is hard. It is pretty though. Like it, it really, it rolls. Yeah. The language of love. Wait. <laughs> well, thank you for everything. Is there is um, a project you are working on right now that uh, you are excited about, or you you just ending your uh, your twenties the same way? Uh, yeah. Well, the project I'm excited about hasn't started yet. I am starting it tonight. So if you're looking for big chunky scarves, I have a pretty cool pattern, simple, affordable. Okay. Um, okay. But yeah, this is how I am going to end my 20s is definitely continue um, nose to the grindstone. Um, yeah. Working on Ribbler, that's kind of my main focus. I'm still working on my artistry just because I feel like I don't know if I'm ever going to be able to go a life without being able to create anymore. So yeah, now you are addicted. <laughs> I know. I, I, I can't imagine going like a whole year without touching anything or like <gasps> creating know. something, right? Like, so I guess until I'm... I pass away. I will be working on something. Um, but yeah, check out Ribbler. I'll be there. I'm open on literally all channels. You can find me on TikTok, Instagram, X, slash Twitter, Reddit, Facebook. Everywhere. Ones, everywhere, literally. <laughs> newsletter. Um, I will put all your social links in the in the description if our followers wants to follow you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, yeah, I'm excited to appear on your YouTube. That's like the one, one of the ones I haven't quite, I need to get on YouTube, but. It's hard. It's, yeah. It's a, it's a, it's a challenge for sure. Like just to talk to a camera, you know, it's already very, very challenging. Yeah, no doubt. Thank you so much for your questions. Letting me kind of, of course. talk about myself. It's, it's fun. It's nice to have more of a rapport with you it's been a pleasure to you know see your account grow and see you grow as an artist and thank you so much yeah you're really on it so appreciate everything that you do <laughs> for the crochet community well thank you so much for your uh, very inspiring story vincent and as i say i will put every link in the description and if you want to follow vincent thank you thank you so much bye bye Thank you so much for watching this episode of the crochet podcast don't forget you can watch all the episodes on my youtube channel or on spotify leave a thumb up or five stars if you like this episode and i see you very very soon bye bye